you sometimes happens at two stages the first stage is the editorial review and the second stage is peer review not all uh, ma uh, i know journals go through peer uh, editorial review editorial review is also a part of the peer review process so um, you know what happens is in the uh, editorial review typically the editors will uh, first so there's an editorial board and this board will look at just glance through the article and see if this article fits within the mandate of the journal so if your journal is a medical journal and you send us something related to law so obviously the journal would not want to publish so the article will say that okay this is more related to law can you give me something related to medical and then uh, you know at that at that junction it is uh, it we won't call it rejected but it is sent back to say that it doesn't fit within the journal scope and if the quality is good enough so quality is again a very visual glance of it they really don't give a lot of uh, you know attention to the content so giving first uh, typically the editorial review will look at these two whether it is um, you know good enough to be um, is it within the scope of the journal and secondly if the quality is good enough and then once these two are screened it goes for peer review so who are peer review peer review are people who are experts we would experts in the field who have some understanding of the subject so they have people of different uh, subject interests that they have in their uh, you know list and they send it to them and ask them can you read uh, these articles that have been sent for publication and it is this art, uh, expert who will then be processing your article to say if it really um, you know fits into the cri it's not about fitting into the criteria whether the article is well written and what is well written is something that i will let you know so from yesterday there have been various uh, resource persons that i have seen who has been talking to you about various aspects about writing an article right and uh, obviously there might be a, some amount of overlap between them and me um, so when it goes for peer review what happens is um, is the article the editor first reviews the article so if the article doesn't fit within the scope obviously it gets rejected but if it fits within the scope then it goes for a peer review once it's peer reviewed once it goes for peer review the peer review uh, assesses the article on various criteria and i'll be talking about those various criteria very soon um, and they make a recommendation now the recommendations are of various kinds which again i will be also talking about this is just a very rough graph to tell you that this is what happens behind the scene so then the editor will read uh, you know the, they'll make some recommend the uh, peer reviewer will read make some recommendations and then forward it to the editor the editor will then look at those recommendations and then give it to the uh in uh, the uh, uh, writer to tell him uh, to tell the writer or the researcher and tell him or her um you know uh, to say that this is how uh, the peer review has looked at it and maybe uh, there are various consequences to what happens in the process one is either the article is uh, accepted so if it's accepted yeah you can continue parting so there's nothing much that you have to do it may require a little bit of copy editing but that's not very uh, you know major uh, the other option that would be given to you is it is accepted pending revision means on principle they have accepted it but there are minor revisions that need to be done in terms of maybe grammatical issues or maybe language issues or things like that but overall content was good it is worth publishing and you need to look at it the third option that is there is if there is any revisions that are required okay so um, now there are revisions also may require there might be different kinds of revisions minor revisions major revisions so when when they say revisions are required it essentially means that the article has not been accepted at this point it, it requires some revisions and um, it depends on whether it's a minor review or a major review so if it is a major review then you know obviously uh, 
uh, so here also that if there is a it's a minor uh, it's a uh, minor revision then you can revise it and you can give it back to the editor and the editor will then tell you that it need to go through a peer review process again but the editor himself can then publish it but if it is major revision then it has to again go through the whole peer review process and then uh, you know and then again yes Excuse me ma'am sorry sorry to disturb you ma'am yes and, uh, uh, so can you press alt and tab twice ma'am alt and tab one alt and tab ten tab tab button then actually you are sharing only your ppt ma'am not your slide so so better stop your sharing then share the slide so share window then slide so because it's wonderful content people are not able to see when you are changing the pptis i am alt and tab no yes alt and tab means you can switch between the windows from google meet to slide so so now what are you seeing actually on the screen no nothing nothing we are seeing because you are not sharing anything ma'am Okay. Share and slide so. Before that, oh, uh, put it your PowerPoint in a slide so. Then come here. This way. Now the PPT only the visible, ma'am. Ma'am, it is possible to send the PPT to us, or else we will share. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do sure. that. Try to uh, press F five in case. It works. Uh, part, which is it? Which what do you want me F5, to do? F five. F five. In PowerPoint, just press F five. It will work. Now. Oh, now press F five, ma'am. I have done that. Oh, but but the what Selva Raja sir is telling correct. After putting your PPT in slide show, then share it, ma'am. No okay. So your slide show is not getting on still. You can't see it. Can't see so it. I will. What I'll do is I'll just email it. Can you give me an email ID to email it? I, I'll, it will. Uh, sure, ma'am. Sure. Which email ID should I send it to? Will you please send to Claudia, ma'am's mail ID, ma'am? Can you tell me the email ID? Claudia Soundari. Claudia. Okay, we will get the mail ID in the message box. Put the mail ID. Share the mail ID. Can you just WhatsApp me? I'll just now immediately send it to you. Sure, sure. It's coming now. It's on the way. So that you can proceed, ma'am. So that you can proceed. No, no, we'll let it happen, no? Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Um, I have sent the PPT. We said again, uh, you know, huge technical challenges. <laughs> no issue, ma'am. We are facing from. We are facing. Uh, no problem, ma'am. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we have received your uh, PPT, so we will share uh, along that. 
So you can uh, uh, tell us that when do you want to change the PET, uh, the yeah. slides. Sure. Can you share it? Okay. Just two, two minutes, ma'am. Yeah, sure, sure. Ma'am, thanks, thanks yeah. a lot, ma'am. We received that and we shared the PPT. Please, ma'am, go ahead. Yeah, so um, were you all able to see any slide or you all were not able to see any slide? No? Now we are seeing, ma'am. Okay. In uh, the full fine. screen, we are seeing. Okay. So, uh, fine. So, I'll just very quickly go through this. So, like I said, there's an, uh, there's an editorial review and there's a peer review. Editorial review does not happen mainly for everything. And uh, usually the editorial just looks at whether it's it's an appropriate topic for the journal and then sends it for peer review. Can you change? Can you change the slide, please? Yeah, and these are the various steps that are, uh, you know, that go through when a, a author submits the journal, uh, submits the article. So uh, the editor reviews it, and if it is passed, then it goes for peer review. The peer review makes many recommendations, and then the recommendations are then sent to the editor with the comments, and then the editor decides what to do next with the comments, because there are different kinds of comments. Some are major comments, and some are minor comments. And if it's rejected, so then again, if it's either accepted or rejected or accepted with revisions. So these are some options that are there. Can you change? So if it's an accept submission, yay, you can again go and have a party. You can enjoy yourself that it's done. And now you can maybe start writing your other article. Um, what happened? Stop sharing. Hello, anyone there? Yes, ma'am. Some technical issues. Ma'am, there is some uh, technical issue. Can we please have a moment to correct it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Ma'am, you can kindly proceed on. No, so it's this has gone right ahead, the slide. Ma'am, is it fine? No, 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 still ahead. Yeah, yeah. OK. So one is your, your paper is either accepted. Um, and then uh, so when it's accepted, great. Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes you get it saying it's accepted with pending revisions, and this this is minor. So it's, it's on principle accepted. 
So you just have to uh, make a few changes here and there, and the changes could be related to English, grammar, something like that. But overall, the content has been approved. So they are convinced with the quality and qu and the content of your um, you know uh, article that you have submitted. Uh, the other comment that you will get would be either revisions required. Now, revisions required means on principle, at the moment, this article is not accepted. It means that you need to further revise it. And the, now depends, again, revision depends on minor revisions or major revisions. If it's minor revisions, again, uh, then uh, it requires, uh, you know, you can make those changes which they are talking about and then submit it to the editor. And then it need not go for peer review again. The editor could then look at it and uh, forward it for submission for, uh, uh, you know, publication. But if it is major, uh, you know, revisions that they are asking for, can I? Can you go to the next one? If they're talking about major revisions, then uh, you know you really have to really work hard, rework on your article, and then uh, it has to go for peer review again, and it goes through the whole cycle once again. And the last option, obviously, is uh, you know your article has not been submit uh, has not been uh, accepted. Now it's okay. The, everybody goes through rejections, and uh, that's not a great deal. It's just meant that you need to re, you know work a little more further on your uh, article, maybe a lot more on your article because writing, I believe, is a skill. And uh, you know it doesn't come easy to everybody. It takes a long time for us to develop that skill. Uh, can we change the slide? So what exactly, as a reviewer, do we look into uh, when we are looking at articles? So some things that we look into is uh, your, you know, your sentence formation, your grammar. So overall, one, one you know, there are various aspects that we look into. So, um, you know, have you uh, formulated your sentences? Some people, you know, in the whole uh, anxiousness of making it sound very academic, write long sentences, and then, you know, you, write, you find a full stop after some four or five, cent, four, five lines, and then uh, you, you can't make head or toe about it. Remember, write simple sentences. The idea of writing an article is that the person in front has to, whoever is your reader, right? Uh, has to understand what you have written. So uh, when I'm peer reviewing, the first thing when I read uh, is I try to see if I am able to understand what you're trying to communicate, right? And how clear are you in communication? So it doesn't matter how big the sentences are, how big the words are, how complicated words that you use. Uh, you know, it, even simple language works. It's about communication. Uh, you have many apps also nowadays to help you do this. Can you go to the previous slide? Yeah, there are many apps also that help you, uh, you know, um, work like Grammarly, and there are many such things which help you out with English grammar. So that should not be a problem. Another thing that you all have to remember is you have to write your article in past tense. Uh, when I went, I collected it, I did it, I analyzed it. It all has to be in the past tense. You know, the writer thought, the writer felt. Uh, so, um, you know, and everybody, um, usually I find a lot of people, they jumble this thing up. They write many sentences in past tense, many sentences in present tense, because when you're writing an article, it always has to be in the past tense, so that you have to be careful about. Um, word count does not match to the expectation of the publishing house. You write so much that if the, if the word count is 5,000, you cannot write 6,000. It has to be 5,000. That is also something that you have to be very careful. And how do you make it less? How do you make a 6,000 word uh, limit into a 5,000? There are many words that you can omit when you write the sentences. For example, when you write, you know, we have this tendency of the and 
or for there's so many such words that can actually go the especially if you if you do a go if you do a search of the then many when you remove half the thes that are there in the sentences uh, that itself and it doesn't change the gramma, grammar in the sentence when you remove these words so we when we write so many words it's just increasing the word count you can write the same sentences with a lesser word count and like i said writing is a skill it does not come uh so easily and you really have to um kind of um learn that so in the first time it's very difficult to get it uh, right but practice makes it perfect that's the only way how to go about it second is have you formatted your page paragraphs tables graphs now you now you all know when you um, you know when you get a pamphlet in your house or you get something that has come with the newspaper if it's attractive with it when it reads well you will go and have a look at it but if it's a black and white a plain something you may not even give a second glance to it similarly to your article as well how well have you formatted your article how well has it been aligned are the tables looking attractive are your graphs looking attractive because sometimes tables and graphs tell the whole story you don't have to write so many words to explain it further the table tells it all the graph tells it all um you know like the other day when i was uh, reviewing an article in the enthusiasm that happened because later on when you convert it into a pdf and things like that there are lots of formatting that gets lost uh, we found that the table numbers and the paragraphs had got misaligned they were not together right so one had to again return it back and say that you know align the tables because your uh, table your table so and so is come in gra in graph so and so and it it all has got jumbled so those are things that we have to once more recheck when we send it can we uh, go to the next slide next slide okay how relevant is um yeah how relevant is your topic in the current context that's something that we is it, before that is there something else before this slide is there any other slide no ma'am please go ahead yeah, yeah. Uh, how relevant is your topic in the current context uh, you you may need to explain it if there is a uh, you know Uh, if you are choosing a topic you should say why is it relevant in today's times that's something that you need to uh, establish is there a logical flow in the argument or discussion because when we read article sometimes you know article uh, the paragraph 1 is so different from the paragraph 2 paragraph 3 every every paragraph looks like a standalone paragraph and one does not see a link between all the paragraphs and that's quite important when you are reading because it's you know as a re as a reviewer some things that we see is how reader friendly it is uh, is the logical flow in the argument happening uh, is the discussion uh, you know you 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 begin to say my main aim of writing this article my objective of writing this article and somewhere along the line when you write the article you forget about your aim and you forget about your research about your objective so what you initially got to start, uh, you know start writing is not what you have written in the article the article may be read uh, maybe maybe have written very well but all said and done even if it was written well it, it does what you have written and what you initiate initially meant to write may not have been the same and because of that unfortunately then we have to uh say that you know it's not matching your content or what was your data so you collect data and you present your data and then when you write your findings you you know you write a different kind of finding which may not be related to the data because you are in such a hurry to prove a certain point that you you just write your findings and how have you reached to the finding how have you concluded that this is your finding i don't find that argument sometimes in the article so that's kind of a little difficult then to justify i sometimes know that the finding that you have written is it may be true because we are also working sometimes in the same field so i know that it is right but the whole question is how did you reach to that conclusion is very important to show in that article 
so the logical flow in the argument needs to be made right um, that's your so again that's your finding your conclusion align with your data research. this is quite important because then your findings are something else your conclusion is right your conclusion you write on your own tangent saying that no this is what i wanted uh, what i meant to write and uh, so recently i had this uh, you know we i had this article that i read on um, you know children uh, because that's where i specialize in my specialization is on children so uh, this girl had written on children to find out uh, about uh, you know health and nutrition and uh, things uh, related to that and um, her data what she found in her uh, you know um, in her study that she had mentioned and the finding was very different it, it, it just spoke about and so as suggested by the data uh, it means that uh, children are malnourished as suggested how did you even come to know that the data is suggesting something like that so you you will have to come out with an argument a lo logical statement to to bring it to that point to say that children are malnourished there are there, there could be different other reasons also why children could be malnourished it's not just about one parameter there could be many parameters so you know that that logical conclusion has to come out um you know, then again, like your table and figures, do they align? Sometimes uh, the, the, the it becomes kind of very monotonous. You're just repeating the table again in the paragraph written below. And there are five males. I can see there are five males. It's already written in the table. The whole purpose why you have written that there are five males is for me, for you not to again repeat that, that five tables. But the whole idea for you now is that the table is there. How do you make it a little more interesting to explain the table and not just narrate what is written in the table? Right? Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, you know, um, many times when we write, uh, things are there in our head. We feel that the reader already knows many things and we directly start. So what essentially should be our first line, we skip the first line thinking that this is common knowledge. But understand one thing, common knowledge is not common. What you feel is common may not be common to others. You have to explicitly state even what you feel is common knowledge because your reader could be anyone. The reader need not be a person who has expertise or knowledge in the topic that they are reading or what you have written, right? So they are, in fact, they're reading an article to understand that concept. So if you're not going to first introduce the concept and then get down to writing it, it, it becomes very difficult for the reader to understand. So write down, even however you feel, it may, it may look very silly, but write it down because it's very important for the reader to know. Uh, as I said, don't have long ref sentences. Your references and citations should be written as per requirement. Many times I find, uh, you know, I find references there and I don't even know how relevant that reference is to the article. You know, it's all a cut, a cut paste job. Even when you cut and paste, you, you pick up that citation and blindly put that citation here without even cross-checking if that citation is still valid or, you know, relevant. Um, you have to use latest uh, you know resources when you um, write an article or things like that you can't be relying to an article written in 1950 1955 i'm not saying those articles are not relevant all i'm saying is uh, you know times have changed and maybe you need to write more uh, or you can use those older articles to say that even today it is still valid as written in a newer article because you have to establish why you're doing it even when you're using your tables figures and all use the latest tables use the latest figures that are available use the latest census that is available those are things that you need to do and you cannot rely and sometimes those latest uh, census data and all may be difficult to access so because it's difficult you use the older one which pops up the first on the google search don't do those things because then as as a reviewer we find it very difficult to say that why have you used this when there are more recent and latest one or when you're writing it in an indian context don't use foreign uh, statistics foreign statistics are foreign statistics use indian statistics um, 
always get somebody to read your article and proof check it before you give it for submission well, that's that's so important because when some when you give it to somebody to read and that somebody should not be your uh, peer or it, it can be your peer no no worries but give it to somebody once to just read it and take an uh, uh, you know uh, uh, expertise from them because it really helps. Sometimes we get such fr fresh, we get students. I love the enthusiasm, but also it's a lot of time and energy that we spend reading these uh, papers and we feel that, and it also hurts us when we have to reject it to say that, please work a little harder. I think there's a lot more you can write. Okay, so your reader, you know, review of literature also has to be extremely strong. Can you change? Yeah, a picture, these are like I said, um, you know, uh, uh, pictures, diagrams, tables play a big thing. Uh, concepts, uh, you know, highlight those concepts. Uh, if you're introducing new concepts, explain it. Don't think that people know the concept that you have understood that you are writing because no, not everybody, even if I've been working in children, uh, children's, uh, you know, issues. There are many concepts I still don't know. Time is changing, world is changing. Do not use acronyms. And even if you're writing acronyms, write what those acronyms mean. So there are different things that are there. Uh, next slide, please. Next, next slide. Next slide. Um, once you get the comments from your reviewer, uh, do remember that uh, these are, uh, don't take it hard. Everyone goes through rejections. Everyone goes through rejections. Everyone goes through, uh, you know, uh, complete rejections. Many of us have, got, uh, you know, go through the, uh, you know, um, resubmit submit with uh, major changes all these comments only help you um, you know improve your writing skill it's extremely frustrating to get such comments let me tell you because uh, after doing so much of hard work you have submitted your article and then when somebody gives you a comment saying that we cannot uh, you know submit it because you have to work a lot more in this you are so frustrated you feel that i have worked so hard then why are they again making me write things because somewhere along the line these are people or we are people who have read so much yeah we know what the field is and we feel that maybe you have a lot more still to write but you feel that you have written everything uh, and trust me when i tell you that you know uh, it's only in the hindsight after a long time when you go back and you look at your article you'll realize oh really after i've revised it how different my article looks yeah uh, it's uh, at that point it is very frustrating but do it hang in there because it's it's needed you need to make that change you need to understand the viewpoint with which the reviewer is saying and if you feel it's not very if you feel that uh, you know that's how you also change you grow you learn from the comments that the reviewer has given uh, rejection it just means you need to work a lot more harder uh, comments take it very very seriously uh, don't dismiss it off, don't feel disheartened and then don't say that I don't want to write anything more. You know, Today when I read those articles that I've written so many years ago, I'm like, I don't want to read it. Oh God, how can I, how have I written this article? You feel it. But these are all, these are all hindsight, right? So at that moment, live with it and try and, uh, you know, kind of hang in there. Writing is not easy. It only comes with, uh, practice so you have to be very very serious about it uh, next slide you'll only come to know after you are two or three times rejected and you keep changing you keep working on it you will feel the difference in your own writing style and uh, it's i know it's a very like i know it's a very very frustrating journey but it's worth it at the end of it you will really see an improvement in your writing skill um, 
and today options are unlimited there are enough materials that you can read you can write it's all available online so uh, you know make the effort do it because writing uh, for uh, scholars is uh, today uh, a something that you cannot miss can you uh, go to the last slide and keep writing it's not easy to write uh, so even if you have submitted your article uh, wait it's coming back to you uh, just be emotionally and mentally prepared uh, keep reading and don't feel dejected please do not feel dejected believe me uh, in years to come you will see that change in your writing skill after you have published a series of at least three to four papers thank you thank you ma'am uh, indeed it was a wonderful presentation on each minute things and uh, let's move to the uh, question and answer session and i may request all the participants who are online and offline to so please put forth your question to speak up good afternoon ma'am hello uh, ma'am i have a doubt uh, first table editorial table opinions within how many months we can expect whether it has gone for the peer review or whether it is still in the editorial board how these are very difficult questions to answer because every journal goes through its own uh, you know process and also as uh, reviewers see editorial goes very fast when it comes to peer reviewers that's where it happens that's where mainly the delay happens uh, because though we are told that you should do it in one month still within one month we are all working professional sometimes it doesn't happen so that process does take time today it's it's really become uh, you know nowadays there's so much of uh, journals uh, some are very efficient some are not so efficient there are lots of working challenges so uh, timelines are very difficult to say some do skip the yeah. Uh, Ma'am, at least uh, whether it has passed the editorial table, how we can uh, within how many months at least we will come to that. Uh, no. We just have to wait for it. It is like uh, at least two months. Will they give the first uh, opinion at least whether it has gone for the peer review? No, no. You have to just okay. wait for it. At the most, what you can do is you can write to them and ask them, uh, "Can you let me know the status of my paper?" Okay. That's, that's because the in the websites, when we send to the international journal, we have sent. It is coming as after one month. It is under review, so that's why I had. Yeah, that. that's it. That's it. And I said editorial review doesn't happen for all journals. Some journals have it. Some journals. It's a. It's it's absolutely a frustrating journey. You just have to be with it. <laughs> Ms. Harni, you have raised your hand. You can please ask your question. Do we have any other question? Offline participants, can we have question? I think Vini has raised her hand. Yes, Vini, Frederick, can you please uh, raise your question? I, Vini, you can please unmute yourself. Vinny, uh, if you can hear us, you can please unmute yourself.
or Vinny, if you are not able to speak, you can write it on the chat. Okay, I think she dropped out. Can we wrap up, ma'am? Yeah. Um, ma'am, at last, uh, I may have a question. Uh, ma'am, actually, uh, there is a myth among all the school uh, scholars and those who are academic, uh, academic writer that always go with the paid journals to publish your articles. So is it a myth that not to go with the free journals because it takes so much of time and if i want to uh, publish my journal soon i i must better go with the paid journal so is it a myth it's is it a myth or is it uh, really true um in the neck ma'am you are breaking ma'am your voice is breaking up okay hello yes yes you are clear yeah, in, in an academic circle, if you want to make a career in an academic life, then um, all, there is a lot of weightage given to peered uh, reviewed journals. Paid journals are not given weightage. And today also, even within peer reviewed journals, there is a lot of hierarchy that has come up within journals because uh, more weightage is being given to sports, uh, you know, uh, approved journals. So there are different kinds of levels of journals that they ha that have come, UGC approved journals. Uh, and, you know, there are so, so there are different kinds of journals also. So you have to select your journal. I think there was, an, there was a session that was there for you all on how to select the right journal to uh, publish in your, uh, you know, uh, webinar so uh, this this is very important uh, always a peer reviewed journal carries more weightage than a paid review thank paid you review. yeah somebody had written in the chat as a press researcher i want to know how to start writing can you give some motivation um seriously uh you you know when you uh, just just write don't get don't think about anything when you start writing write down some two or three pages and then read it and see that is this okay because what happens is when we try when we try to write a journal article uh, we put we first take a template we keep a format then we read, then we read, and then we read, and then we uh, download so many articles, then we never read those articles ever, and then we lose our interest. So forget about all that. Just write whatever is in your head, first write it down. And once you have written it down, then start giving shape to what you have written. That will help you, uh, you know, take your article forward. Don't get into this uh, whole thing about first, first let me do like a literature review. No, no. Whatever is on your head, just write it down. So is there any other query? I think, ma'am, we can wrap up. Thank you. Thank you. Shall I leave? Uh, ma'am, just a second, ma'am. Ma'am, thank you so much. Uh, despite you. of your busy schedule, uh, you are really, even without lunch and all that, you have joined this. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank yeah, it was very informative. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. I take this opportunity to thank all the participants, especially the faculties and scholars for your active participation. We truly hope that this national webinar had enlightened your mental ability, logical thinking and creativity in academic writing. As we come to close this national webinar, I now invite Dr. Muthu Kumran, Assistant Professor, to render the vote of thanks.
our respected director, uh, Larry Amman, uh, scholars, friends, uh, good evening to all. So it's my uh, pleasure to propose the word of thanks uh, for concluding these two wonderful days. Uh, national webinar uh, regarding the academic writing, uh, especially uh, published in indexed journals. Indexed journals uh, is very full, uh, very much useful. I know that I agree that. Uh, so in this case, this is our duty to recognize the people, those who are supported for the success of this program. So in this regard, first of all, uh, behalf of the center and behalf of our scholars and friends, I have to convey my sincere thanks to the uh, uh, administration of our university, uh, our vice chancellor, our uh, registrar and all other administrative staffs who uh, provided their salient support uh, for the success of this program and followed that uh, the, the webinar coordinators, Professor Balakrishnan and Professor Kalaria Swami Soundari. So they are that uh, the people, those who were who are initiated this program uh, regarding the quality, enriching the quality of research writing and the quality of publication. So thanks to both of them. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Along with that, the colleagues, those who are uh, worked along with me, uh, Kartik and Guna, uh, their support, their role is uh, unavoidable uh, whenever we are taking the context of uh, the successful context of this program. So thanks to both of you, Guna and Karti. And followed by, I, I, I have to mention that uh, people, uh, those who have come and sharing their knowledge with their valuable time, uh, Professor Sigamani Pandit, uh, Dr. Samir Babu, Dr. E.M. Sangar, and uh, of course, K.P. Uh, Asa Mugundar. So that, that presentation which we had just before, it's really wonderful. And thanks to all of you, and especially thanks to you, ma'am, Asa ma'am, uh, such a wonderful uh, insight you are given in the last one hour. Thanks a lot. And in this regard, I have to convey, because they are our pillars, not only in our department, not only in the webinar, our uh, pillar, our, uh, what do you call our department also, our center also. Uh, I can uh, say their names like uh, Abdul Sari, Dinesh, uh, Madino, Seema, Gopika, and Lucy, Ganga, and some uh, Father Jay Baskar, and so some people have maybe missed out. Anyway, they are the scholars, uh, those who are uh, Abilas, yes. But he is there and says that. That's it. <laughs> so Abilas especially. Okay. So these people are that became the success of the program. Thank you all guys. And in this case, I have to convey my sincere thanks to oh, our our dean, Professor Raja, along with that the supported people from Lifelong Learning uh, Education to cover up uh, the photographs of this program. Thanks to them as well. Uh, <laughs> Along with that, uh, I, I convey my sincere thanks to uh, our office staffs, uh, Vigneswari ma'am and uh, Jeeva, those who have given that additional support, uh, that uh, moral support uh, for the success of this program. Thanks to them as well. So apart from that, I, I won't forget, I never forget that uh, the participants uh, from the campus, outside the campus, so we are seeing that uh, many people have joined via online from various universities, colleges, institutions. Uh, so we are very happy to receive you uh, and very happy uh, to, uh, what do you call, uh, to interact with you. So we are very privileged to have a kind of a webinar in this regard. So thanks to all of you. Along with that, uh, that Professor M.A. Sudhir, who is the Professor Emirates, who gave always the support for the success of our program. So we are uh, very happy uh, to convey uh, our sincere thanks to Professor Sudhir. Thank you all. And finally, I have to conclude this session by th giving thanks to the people, those who are assembled here. So the friends, scholars, students, from all other departments in our university. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Uh, ma'am, Asa, ma'am, do you want to say something? You raised your hand.
no, sorry, 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 sorry. It's okay, ma'am. It's okay. So thanks to everyone. So uh, with all of the people only, this uh, program got a wonderful success. Thank you all. So we are planning to have uh, programs like that. So we are expecting the same amount of support, love uh, uh, from each one of you. Thanks a lot. Bye now. Thank you, Dr. Muthukumaran. Uh, for all the participants who are online and offline here, we just wanted to give some information about our Department of Operate Research. Uh, in Ganigram Rural Institute, our Department of uh, the Center for Applied Research offers a program on uh, research methodology and statistics. And uh, this semester now we, have, uh, we are already working on two books. Uh, the, one is on uh, intergenerational solidarity. Another we are working on towards rural sustainability research and development during in pandemic era. So uh, those of you wish to contribute and if you have some papers that you want to add on to this book, uh, if you have it, you can send it to the email addresses that are already available in the uh, flyer. You can send it. Uh, maybe within a week, if you can send it, uh, we will see that uh, we are we will be able to uh, add on to this uh, book that we are intending to bring out. Uh, so otherwise also you are most welcome you are welcome to gandhigram rural institute and a special invitation to center for applied research uh, so thank you once again for joining please do continue to join us in all our programs thank you so good afternoon to all the participants uh, i'm sure all all of you uh, have received the feedback link kindly ensure that you fulfill the feedback link so that uh, you, you won't be facing any issues in getting the e-certificates the e-certificates we are working on it uh, we'll, we'll provide the e-certificate as soon as possible most probably we'll, we'll get it on, on the next week uh, as far as the materials uh, shared by the guest speakers uh, we'll share the materials as soon as we receive it from them the, the powerpoints whichever is shared to us we'll definitely share it in the whatsapp group so kindly follow the whatsapp group we request you to kindly patiently wait for the PPTs because it has to be it has to reach us so that uh, we can send it to you we can share it with you so soon we are planning to upload this entire event in youtube that will also be shared with you in email and as well as in whatsapp group that link will also be shared uh, we we really thank you for all your sincere cooperation and support uh, throughout this program without you this program is not possible at all thank you so much thank you uh, now we will we'll all have uh, we'll all stand up for the national anthem <laughs> Punjab Singh Gujarat ke Maratha, Dravid Uttal Banga, Vindayi Ma Chale Yamuna Ganga, Uchal Chal Vitaranga, Tab Shubh Naave Jaale, Tab Shubh Aashish Maale, thank you thank you so much Thank you.